Brilliant. Okay. Hey guys, my name is Eddie. Um, I'm the head of maths at Trevor Technology High School. Um, this is my eighth year teaching virus. I'm just, you know, in the crowd, it's like, oh, that's a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> I debated um, it. Oh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's a competition. So, uh, my very first day as a teacher back in 2007 was exhilarating and challenging and deeply, deeply satisfying. But it was also incredibly confusing. Um, going from when I had my su trusty supervisor just a few meters away, then to be standing there, in, walking towards the classroom by myself, and reaching out pocket, getting out my keys, and opening up my classroom. And it just yes. felt so strange. It reminded me of the first time um, after I got my driver's license, you go from your L's to your red P's, and you're sitting in the car, and you, you hit the ignition, and you're like, no, no one's watching. No one's, no one's picking up my mistakes. I didn't look at my blind spot, and no one's, no one's giving me direction. Right? I was very confused. I remember my first day was like that, uh, and honestly, most of my first year was like that. I was just very directionless, and so that's why today I'm going to try and give you uh, four compass points for beginning teachers like me, and kind of what I, I wish I knew back then, and so I hope you will learn from. Okay, so. Four compass points. Let's start with the most important thing. Once I go to the next slide. Ah, there we go. Okay. The most important thing. It's all about the kids. Okay. You are teachers. Your job is not about principles or propositions or points on a syllabus. It's about people. Okay. Never ever forget that. Uh, the 30 people in front of you every day in your classroom, they're amazing human beings and your goal is to help them grow. Right? Now look, I, I hope that you are really passionate for your subject, for whatever KLA, whatever area you're interested in. Okay? I hope you have a deep personal interest in whatever ideas you're going to be getting up and exploring and explaining. However, if you cannot find it in your heart to care for these human beings who are going to be in front of you every day, then do yourself and everyone else as well a favor and find another profession because you're not helping anyone. In fact, I'd argue you're actually making things worse. Mm -hmm. I think a bad teacher is worse than no teacher at all. Like kids can sort of, you know, they'll work themselves out, they'll find something to do, they'll learn something, right? But a bad teacher can ruin a child, seriously. And I think we've all had some of those experiences. I don't care how much you have things up here if you don't have it here. And the kids won't care either. I don't know if you've seen this quote before. It's a bit of a truism, really, that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I, I really believe that. Now, there are lots of reasons why this is my first compass point. Okay? You won't enjoy your job very much if you can't cultivate relationships, lots of them, with your students and with staff as well. Okay? Not only will you not enjoy your job, though, you won't be very effective at your job. That's because relationships are not like, yeah, not deep intimate relationships, that kind of thing. But like what your, what your, um, your training teachers, your teacher trainers talk about in terms of rapport, that's the medium for learning, right? If you don't have a relationship with your students, all you can do is just lecture at them. That's not real teaching, and it won't produce real learning, okay? So I really believe this, right? And it's not just, by the way, it's not just um, nice quotes that get put on like, you know, blurred backgrounds so they sound legit, right? Um, there's <laughs> really some guy in this. I don't know how many of you um, uh, subscribe to this guy. If you're not, you should be, okay? Um, Derek Muller puts it this way. The fundamental role of a teacher is not to deliver information. It's to guide the social process of learning. What your role is, is to walk into that classroom and inspire, challenge, and excite your students so they want to learn. Okay? It's a social process. That's why relationship is at the heart of it. It goes on. The most important thing a teacher does is make every student feel they're important and therefore accountable for doing the work of learning. It doesn't matter how flashy your activity is. If they're not actually doing the work of learning, it won't matter. It really won't matter. So remember, it's all about the kids. So that's point one. Compass point two: color outside the lines. I was really bad at art, so this is kind of a personal thing for me. There's an old idea, um, tradition, culture, if you like, in teaching that 
we draw lines between the different faculties or the different sectors of education, right? And we say, you know, I'm primary, you're secondary, or I'm HSIE and you're science. And sadly, that can express itself in a real rivalry and like actual teachers, adults, being like bitter and petty about really, really small things. Now, you can see how wrong that is if you just refer back to point one. Yes. It's all about the kids. Should we not all be doing, working together, doing everything we can to help them? Okay? Now, I'm really, really fortunate that I work at a school where we have a large combined staff room, it seats 75 staff, four faculties. It's about, it's about half, the, half the, fact, the school, by the way. It's a large school. And um, I've lost count of the number of times I've overheard a conversation from like someone in TAS or creative performing arts, and they've said something, and I'm like, totally using that in my lesson, right? <laughs> and then I'll, I'll walk into year eight and I'll say, hey, I hear you've been learning in visual arts about Islamic tiling patterns. Well, let me tell you about the five-fold rotational symmetry that makes that beautiful. <laughs> 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 now, when you, when you close yourself off yeah. from that, right? You lose that opportunity to learn for yourself and for your students. Don't rob yourself and them of that. So, that was compass point two, color outside of the lines. Compass point three, master your craft. This guy is a Chinese street calligrapher. I love that there's such a thing as Chinese street calligraphy. If you squint, you can see what he's doing. He's just out on the sidewalk, he's out on the pavement, and he's got this thing which is basically a pointy mop. Yeah, that's basically what it is. He dips it in water and he's just doing his thing, writing character after character. Now, the second he lifts up his mop thing, okay, it finishes a character. The second he does that, it begins to dry and disappear. But he doesn't care. He's not trying to make a mark. He is trying to achieve mastery. That's what he's doing, right? And teaching is exactly the same. Teaching is a craft to be mastered, right? You need to remember this, I'll tell you why, because there are a hundred things that will distract you from mastering your craft. Now, don't get me wrong, most of those things are good things, right? Really good things, extracurricular activities, um, sport, having your friends, etc., etc. all good things. But if you let them become the main thing, then you're in a problem. Okay, let me give you an example, right? Technology, I love technology. Okay, I am a mathematics teacher, but I'm also qualified to teach all of the computing courses, and I use technology every day. Okay, so hear this statement I'm about to say in context. Technology, when it's used for its own sake, is a distraction. It takes you away from mastering your craft, and it doesn't help people learn better necessarily. Okay, it can be really flashy, and it looks really cool. And you know what? It can be really engaging too, without producing better learning. Okay? So, so don't let it distract you. Don't be like, oh, I'm just about the next tool, the next tool, or the next tool. Master your craft. Now, what does that look like? Okay, let me give you three examples. Example number one, you remember how I said people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care? Well, once they know how much you care, it just so happens. They do actually care how much you know, right? So <laughs> therefore, no facilities, <coughs> okay? Work hard, it will take you years, but learn your curriculum. Get those dot points, they're not the main idea in teaching, but you've got to know them. You've got to know the connections. Otherwise, how are you going to teach effectively? Okay. So, know thy syllabus. Master your craft number two. Hone your questioning skills. Most early career teachers um, talk way, way too much. Okay? We actually need to learn to listen better and to ask, know our students well enough to ask the right questions, to elicit them to articulate their understanding. That's when they really learn. Okay? Hone your questioning skills. And last little tip under mastering your craft. Work hard to deeply understand assessment. Now, I know about you, when you hear the word assessment, assessment's not sexy or cool, okay? It just happens to be really freaking important, okay? So I remember walking into my first KLA meeting and you know, they were handing out the exam loss and I'm like, oh okay, I'm writing the year seven half yearly. How hard can this be? I'll throw some questions together, it'll all be okay. Head to my head teacher for review, and like, this is great, got this in the bag, okay? It comes back like covered in red, and it was in shreds because you know what? It was a rubbish assessment. I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know how to craft questions that allowed students to demonstrate their understanding and could distinguish different levels of understanding, okay? People think maths, right? Oh, it's just right or wrong. 
couldn't be further from the truth. And understanding assessment is the key to doing that properly. Okay. So, hone your um, craft and master it. Right, last tip, number four. To accomplish something great, if you want to set out to accomplish something great, and by the way, you should, okay? Don't, don't make something great your goal explicitly. Right? If you want to accomplish something great, then accomplish something good for a really, really long time. Okay? That's how the Grand Canyon formed. Right? The Grand Canyon is not like, it wasn't like someone came in with dynamite and that kind of thing. It's just this humble little river and it did its thing over tens of thousands of years and created this thing of incredible beauty. Now, the thing I'm most known for is for putting videos on YouTube. and. I didn't set out to achieve something great. And you'll know that if you go back and have a look at some of my first videos. I'm not even in the frame, right? I didn't set out to achieve something great. I just wanted to help one student. And I just happened to keep on doing that for a long time. And it ended up being something worthwhile for people, right? Now, I kind of view that as a bit of a metaphor for teaching in general. Uh, this guy, I wrote down his name. Where is it? No, I typed his name. Um, he's a man who decided that he should just try and do something good and do it really, really slowly. His name is, here we go, Jadav Paye. And what he did was, he started planting trees. Just did a few here, a few there. He did it for decades. He did it for so long that he created mm. a 1,360 acre forest. It's so big you can see that sucker from space. <laughs> he did something good for a long time. And I hope you guys do something good mm. for a long time. One lesson, one assessment, one student at a time. That's the joy and privilege of a teacher. Okay. So remember, if you want to accomplish something great, then accomplish something good for a long time. Master your craft, spend all your time making sure that you know what you're talking about and can give your students the confidence that they can know what they're talking about from you. Uh, where did my mouse go? There we go. Color outside the lines, it's okay, no one's watching anyway and you learn loads. And remember, it's all about the kids. Woo.